Hi guys, it's Penguin Design here, bringing you another exciting tutorial on the Pong series. Now, I'm not even sure what part we're up to. I think it's part four, maybe even part five. But whatever it is, what we're going to be doing in this episode is implementing a score and restart system. So this is pretty much the whole basis for the competitive nature of the Pong game. So to begin with, as usual, we're going to open up Unity 5 and uh, navigate to our old project. Mine was called Pong YouTube. So once you click on it, it will open up with Unity. And if we uh, press play to go back from where we left off, uh, there's a whole lot of issues. So first though, before I begin um, implementing the uh, restart and score system, I'm going to change the speed on the enemy to be 10. Now this will be too hard for the final game, but just for testing purposes, this will mean that uh, we will pretty much always lose. Next is that if we go into our scripts folder and open up the paddle script, uh, here we have it clamping the positions. But I really think that if we want a good game, the clamp needs to be a little bit closer to the edge. So what I'm going to do is select a paddle in my hierarchy and then in my scene view, press F. So this will focus on the object. I'm just going to drag it up. In fact, I can't be in play mode. I'm going to drag it up until it's right at the top. So 12.5 looks good. So now back in Mono Develop, what we're going to do is change this on line 12 to be 12.5 F to tell Unity that it is a flow and change this to 12.5 F. Hit Control S, go back into Unity. We've got no errors and we don't need to test it because all we did was add some simple code. And I'm also going to do the same by going into my enemy script by double clicking on it. And I'm going to add a clamp statement. So what we can do is we can basically just copy this line, control C, in our enemy script, paste that. Whoops, we should probably paste it right here. So what we're going to do now that we've pasted that in is to find a new vector 3 up here. And that will be vector 3, meaning position in 3D space, player pause. Whoops. Player pause. So now this should no longer be in red. And what we're going to do here is where it says Y pause, we're going to write target pause dot Y. And now finally, over here where we change the game object's position, instead of target pause dot Y, we're going to set it to be player pause dot Y. So hit Control S, go back into Unity, and now just for, uh, actually, what we can do is we can press play, and now we can see that we can go much closer to the edge, and our enemy can go closer to the edge. So that is working. So now what we're going to do is implement the uh, restarting system. So first, I'm going to hit Control Shift N um, to create an empty game object. Set its position to be zero on each axis, and then we're going to name it text. So in case you haven't guessed, this is going to store all the text meshes. So before we do that, we're going to go in our assets folder, right click to create a new folder, and we're going to name this fonts. Uh, because we don't want it to be default Arial, um, we're actually going to be using a more uh, pixel art sort of font. So I will put a download in the description or maybe even an annotation um, to let you download it. And all you have to do is drag it from Windows Explorer into Unity and it should come up. So what you should do is under font size, select 500. Hit apply. Now this is just because we're not going to be using the Unity UI text. We're going to be using text meshes. And uh, don't really worry, but that just ensures that it won't look pixelated. So what we're going to do is under game object, click game object, 3D object, and 3D text. So even though it's called 3D text, it is actually a text mesh. So as you can see, default text meshes are pretty much the ugliest thing ever concocted. Uh, so look at that, you can see massive pixelation, a whole lot of issues, the characters aren't lined up properly. And that is actually why we set the font size to be 500. So what we're going to do is here where it says text, just write zero, because that's going to be the default text. 
and under font just drag in the pixel art font so now you will notice that it is absolutely massive and that's because we set the text size to 500 so what you should do now is set the scale to 0.1 on the x 0.1 on the y and just leave it to be 1 on the z so you might be thinking to yourself well why didn't you just make it 50 uh, and that's because well really I don't know why, but Unity just is, it's better if you import this, make this a massive number, and then make this a decimal. Don't ask me why, but it just is. So under position, I'm just going to choose an approximate position, so about negative uh, 6 on the X, and about 14 on the Y, maybe 13, yep. So now I'm going to rename this to be player text. So this is the player score. And now I'm just going to duplicate it using Control D and rename it right over here in the inspector to enemy text. Okay, and I'm going to move it over on the x axis to be, say, uh, 3. Yep, okay. So now what we can do is drag both of these as a child of the text object. So now we can manipulate both of them at the same time if we ever need to. Also, it just neatens things up a bit. So no, we're not done in Unity. I know you're really excited to get into the code, but we have to do one more thing. It, and that is that we're gonna hit Control Shift N to create a new game object. And this one, we're not gonna set its position to be zero quite yet, because we're gonna hit Add Component, uh, Physics, Box Collider. And now what I'm gonna do is, um, under this game object that we just created, make its size of the box collider like 3 on the x-axis and about 30 on the y-axis. It doesn't have to be exact. And then set, make sure its z position is 0, else this won't work. And just approximate the position, I found that about, um, I don't know, if I just drag it over with the red arrow. So I'm going to make it about negative 25. So I'm probably not giving the best explanation for this, but what this is, is um, we'll have a piece of code that says if the ball object touches this collider, then basically reset the game and add one to this score. So in order to do that, we're going to check is trigger in the box collider, duplicate it with control D, uh, set its X position to be 25 for this one. So this should be on the other side, yeah. And so what we're going to do is name them. So this would be enemy. And the term commonly used is dead zone. Um, so now this other game object we're going to rename to player dead zone. And finally, we're going to create an empty game object using control shift N. Set its position to be zero on each axis and then name it dead zone. So now we can drag in the player dead zone and the enemy dead zone as a child of this. And now everything is looking a heck a lot neater. So now in our scripts folder, we're going to right click and create a new C sharp script. And I'm going to name it score. So strictly speaking, it should be called dead zone, but score actually makes a bit more sense. So what we're going to do before we uh, start coding is select our enemy and player dead zone and drag on the score script. So now if we open it up in mono develop, what we can do is in case you haven't guessed, just like all my other tutorials, we're going to delete the comments. Uh, and for this one, we can delete the void start. And to begin with, we are going to define some variables. So first we're going to make a public so we can see it in the Unity editor. And this will be a text mesh. So that will obviously be referring to the corresponding text. And oops, before I do that, what I'm going to do is, due to popular request, I'm going to zoom in a bit so you guys can see it a little bit better. Anyway, so now I can continue. So public text mesh. And you can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to call it uh, current score, so C double R, SCO. Uh, it just makes it quicker to write. 
Uh, next we're going to, this can be private, so if you don't write anything, it's default at private, and it's going to be a type game object, and this will be referencing the ball. So now we're going to have a private int, so that means any number, no decimals, and this will be the score. So in case you haven't figured it out, this int score is going to be added one to every time it collides with the collider that we just made on the object. And then in the update function, it's going to set the text mesh equal to the int score. So we're not actually quite done yet as far as variables go. We're going to have to define two more publics. So we write public, so we can see it in the Unity editor. And this will be a type game object. And this will be referring to the ball prefab. So I'm going to write ball pref. Because this is the, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to destroy the ball and instantiate the ball again at the right position. The reason I'm doing this rather than using application.restart is because else if I used application.restart, the int score would be set back to zero. Okay, so finally we're going to have one more public and that's going to be a transform. So transform refers to... Uh, this, these properties over here in Unity. So a public transform, and this will be called the paddle object. So this is just so that we can track the position of the paddle. So now in our void update, we're not going to have to do much. And the reason, you're probably thinking to yourself, once I write this, you could do this all in the void start. And uh, the reason is that every time we increase the score variable, uh, we need to update all these variables. So first I'm going to set ball equal to game object with a capital G dot find oops dot game object dot find object with tag make sure not to use game objects with tag uh, and then you're going to open up your parentheses and search for the ball tag or whatever you set the ball object to have so uh, paddle, ball, as you can see we tagged it ball, so I'm going to use B ball with a capital B. Add a semicolon to tell the computer to go to the next line. Now I'm going to set the uh, current score variable, I mean text mesh, and you have to use dot text um, to adjust the text property of it um, right over here. So we're going to set current score dot text uh, equal to. Now by default, Unity can't just you can't just write equal to score, and that's because you'd have to convert the score int into a string. But a quicker way of doing that is if you can concatenate uh, an empty string and the int together. So basically, concatenation is just combining two strings. So you can do this just with a plus sign. So for now, we are done with the void update and we're going to go to a new function. So now in case you didn't know, a really commonly used function in Unity is on trigger enter. So I'll make sure to use a capital O, T and E. And this is called uh, when uh, some collider, uh, some rigid body, sorry, uh, goes inside of this object's collider if it is marked trigger. So that's why we clicked trigger. And so now what we're going to do is open and close the parentheses. Um, and inside this uh, void on trigger enter, actually, in the parentheses, we need to give it the property. So the property that it requires is a collider. And what we're going to do is name it other. So this is pretty much a similar process to creating uh, a new variable. So now the bulk of our code will be in the on trigger enter function. So first thing we're going to do is check if the object, the rigid body that collided with uh, the dead zone object uh, has the tag ball. So what we're going to do is write other dot tag is equal to open up quotation marks and write ball. So now in this if statement, what we're going to do is set the score variable. Make sure to use a lowercase c for score. Now you could say score equals score plus one. 
But a quicker way of writing that is you can just say score plus equals one. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we can do is destroy the ball uh, object. So what we're gonna do is write destroy and in the parentheses, uh, write ball, make sure to use a lowercase b because we are referencing this variable. So now that we've destroyed the ball, what we wanna do is instantiate the ball again, but this time at a different position. So what we're gonna do is write instantiate okay make sure to spell it correctly i'm warning you it's tricky and now in the parentheses we're going to instantiate the ball prefab so referencing this variable up here and its position will be at a new vector 3 new position in 3d space and its position will be as follows so the reason we defined this transform up here is because we want its position to be equal to the paddle's position. So what we're going to do is go paddle object dot x, I mean, sorry, paddle object dot transform dot position dot x. And we don't want it to be right inside the paddle. So what we're going to do is plus two to the x position. Now we're going to write comma to go over to the y position. And again, we're going to write paddle object dot transform dot position dot y. And now we can just write comma zero because we want its z axis to be zero. So now we're going to use a function that's built into Unity and that is quaternion dot identity. So what this will do is set its rotation to be whatever the prefab's rotation was, and that was zero. Now what we need to do is before the instantiate, add another colon, I mean, um, parenthesis, and then here write as game object, and now add a parenthesis after this. So what I'm gonna do is zoom out a bit so you can see the entire line so far. So you should probably copy this down because the parentheses get a little bit complicated. And now what we're going to do is after this as game object, we're going to use dot transform dot parent. And that is because we want uh, this object to become a child of the paddle object. So what we're going to do is say equals paddle obj. Add a semicolon. And now we're finished with that line. And in fact, we're finished with uh, most of the code. So really, the only difficult line was instantiate. And uh, even though it was complicated, if you've copied it out right, it should all be working. So what we're going to do is go up to File, Save, go back into Unity, wait for it to load it. As you can see in our console, we have no errors. And um, what we're going to have to do is for our enemy dead zone, because when the ball collides with um, this dead zone, we want it to set the player's score to be plus one. So what we're going to do is drag in player text under current score. So what we're going to do is right click in our project view, hit create folder, and we'll add a prefabs folder, which I don't know if something happened since my last save file, but what we're going to have to do is drag in the ball as a prefab, and under scale, set its scale to be 0 0.925. Just trust me, that is the right scale. And you, it actually doesn't matter what its position is set to because we set the position in the instantiate code. Now, all we have to do is in our player dead zone, I mean, in our enemy dev zone, drag in the ball prefab under this ball pref variable and paddle object, drag in the paddle. So now what we're gonna do is repeat the similar process, but this time drag in the enemy text under the current scroll, drag in the ball prefab under ball pref, and paddle obj under paddle obj. So what we can do is save, just in case Unity crashes, hit play, and let's just hope that this is all working. So hopefully, Yep, the whole game's working. Let's just lose. That's now set to one. And it looks like we have an error here. Um, the object 
type game object has been destroyed, but you're still trying to access it. So if you're coming up with this error, uh, that's because we've dragged in the variable in Unity, but because the variable has been destroyed, it's not working. So what we have to do is only execute this tag if this code, sorry, if the ball exists. So first thing we're going to do, this is in our enemy script, remember, is get this ball obj equals get game object with tag and hit control X and then control V in the void update. And that's because uh, the ball object is being destroyed and created over and over again. So that needs to be in the update. Now what we're going to do is create an if statement and check if ball object is not null. So that's just checking that the variable has been set. Put that all in parentheses. Um, I'm going to organize it a bit. And for that, we are done. Hit Control S, go back into Unity. Once it's compiled, we can clear our compiler, press play. And if we lose now, on purpose, we're not getting that error, and we can keep on playing. And just to test, in fact, I've noticed one thing. This needs to be set to 1.3 uh, over here in the inspector, but just don't hit apply. Uh, but anyway, what we need to do is, what we're going to do is in our enemy object, under speed, set it to 1. And this is just so that we will win, just to test our theory. So press play, and we should be winning every time. And yep, the score is updating. Okay, so it seems that that is pretty much working. Thanks for watching, guys, and we've almost finished our Pong game. All we need to do is add in a restart GUI and maybe fix up a few errors, but apart from that, we've almost finished. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the episode.